Hello, my dear students of class 11. This is your tutor, Atinio Sekose, and welcome to this English class with me. Today's topic is No Men Are Foreign by James Kirkup. And uh, if we look at the topic here, No Men Are Foreign, it sounds very far off, but we are in for a big surprise here. First of all, we are going to take a look at uh, the background of the author. So, uh, James Kirkup, whose real name is James Falconer Kirkup, born in 1918 to 2009. So he is, we can say that he is a modern writer and he is an English poet, a traveller, a translator. So it is no wonder and no surprise that he wrote a poetry called No Men Are Foreign, which has to do with the oneness of humanity. I'm sure he has had a lot of uh, travelling exposure. In fact, if you read up his um, background, you would find that he lived in America and also in Japan. So he ne obviously he have he had a lot of experiences, exposure to different kinds of uh, culture, uh, lifestyle, and so on. So we are going to find out more about this poem here. The setting or the backdrop of our poem here is that of a war background. The poet gives us a, a, a picture of a war setting. Now, in, these are some of the phrases where we can say that it is set in the backdrop of war. So, beneath all uniforms, uniforms here is, in a very interesting way, uniforms here is actually a pun, P-U-N, which is a literary device and it means uh, a clever play of words. So uniforms here is representing, you know, naturally in a battlefield soldiers would be wearing uniforms, but also the poet also meant the commonness, the uh, sameness or similarities that he is also trying to uh, reveal here or reflect through his poem here. So that's what we have. Then the next one we have is we who take arms against each other. So arms here is referring to weapons, but also again we will learn that it is not just referring to uh, weapons that we use uh, literally in a battlefield, but also weapons that destructive things that uh, destroy humanity. Hells of fire and dust. Naturally, in a battlefield, a lot of, uh, there would be a lot of bombing and a lot of bomb blast. So it will uh, create a lot of pollution as well. Again, I want you to keep note that he is not only referring to uh, a literally a picture of a war or a battlefield here, but the kind of battles, like I said, that we fight against evils that, or against uh, things that which threatens humanity. So that's what we can say here. Now, the theme of the poem, that is a very universal theme. I have already mentioned it, that is oneness of humanity. And along that theme, he is also, some sub-themes are about peace, about war, and also about ignorance. So that's what we are going to find out. The poem opens with the word remember. So when we say remember, we are taking into consideration that something, an experience or an object is already imprinted in our mind. You know, we already are aware of it. So the poet here, he started off in a very clever way saying that remember, in other words, he is trying to uh, evoke the consciousness of his readers or the people to remember because this is already in us. And what is that he is trying to tell us here? Remember that no men are foreign, remember no men are strange, and so on. So that is what he is trying to convey through this poem here. The poet also uses a lot of pronouns such as we, are, us, and so on. So with those kind of words, he re-emphasized again and again throughout his poem about the oneness of humanity. And with that, we would move on to uh, discussing the poem Lines. So we are going to take a look at the poem uh, Lines Wise, all right, because we do not exactly have a stanza in this poem here. So lines one to six. No men are foreign. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathe. Like ours, the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. 
They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvest, by worst long winter starved. So that is lines one to six. Now let's take a look at the opening line here. Like I said, it, the poet started with uh, the word remember. In other words, trying to let his readers recollect that we are all the same. No men are strange, which means everyone is same. Everyone shares a lot of, in fact, similarities. No men are different. No country is foreign. Foreign here is referring to a, uh, abroad, uh, a country uh, a person who is living abroad or a country that is not our own. But, you know, the poet is saying that no country is foreign. In other words, why? Because everyone is the same and no country is different from another country. So we will find out why he is saying that. Now, beneath all uniforms, remember, we are uh, having a backdrop of a war here. So in times of war, when soldiers go and uh, fight uh, the enemy or the opponent, they all wore uniforms, but within it, beneath it, in other words, underneath it, we all have the same body. We have the same body structure, we have the same body functionalities and so on. So that is, again, the commonness that the poet has uh, drawn out from this. And the word uniforms here is a literary device called pan, that is P-U-N, uh, which is referring to two different meanings. On, on the one hand, we have uniforms here as the uniforms of the soldiers. On the other hand, the word, the word is also suggesting the commonness that even though these people are fighting, the soldiers are fighting each other, they are very much the same. Like ours, the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. The very land that we walk upon is also the same land that the enemy or the opponent is walking upon. And that, what kind of a land is that? That is the earth, referring to the earth. It is the same thing. In other words, we all share the same earth or home here. And in the same way, we will all be buried or for that matter, if you want to think it as a soldier, we would all be, they would all be buried within the same, uh, in fact, in the same land that is the earth. So in other words, we all share the same earth as well as we all share the same faith. Even though we may be walking in different places, we share the same earth or home. They too aware of sun and air and water. They are also aware of all these, uh, the basic elements that is sun, air and water. And what are, uh, these are in fact the very things that we all human beings need to survive, regardless of what race you are, regardless of what culture you, you grew up in, regardless of what language you use. So in other words, whether you are black, white or yellow, we all share the same thing. We all try to survive in the same way. We all live in the same place, are fed by peaceful harvest, by wars long winter starved. If there is a time we are having a time of peaceful time, then what happened is we would enjoy the good fruit of harvest. However, in times of war, everyone would suffer, whether again, regardless of whatever country you belong to, whether it is Russia, whether it is India, and so on. So these are the, uh, the way, in this way, the poet has drawn out the common things. Even though it appears as though two countries may be fighting each other, even though it appears that soldiers are fighting against each other, the poet draws out the common entities to bring out the message of universality or universal brotherhood. <clears throat> now the lines 7 to 12. Their hands are ours, in their lines we read, a labor not different from our own. Remember they have eyes that like ours wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Now, these lines are actually very interesting. The, again, drawing out the common things, they, uh, using the metaphor of hands. Their hands are us, ours. How can we say that it is ours? Because the very hand that they use to toil the land, to labor, to work, it's the same thing 
with us too. The hands that we use to, uh, to toil the land or to work the land or the hands that we uh, depend on to live. So in the same way, in this way, and in their lines we read a labor. It is the same thing with them as well as with us, not different from our own. Just as we also tr strive hard to survive, they, they also do the same thing. Remember, they have eyes that like ours wake or sleep. When we go to sleep, we close our eyes. It's the same thing with regardless of whatever race or culture or language that you speak. Uh, it's the same thing. When we wake up, we open our eyes. In other words, it is also the same with the same eyes. We also see and perceive things, whether it is injustice or whether it is a very uh, good thing that happened to us, kindness, all those things. We see it and perceive it in the same manner as the other nation or as the other country. It is not, uh, we cannot say that no, in, uh, in Japan they do not see with their eyes, you know, we cannot say that. It is the same thing. Remember, we all have the same body, we all have the same body structure, functionalities and so on. Now this line is important and strength that can be won by love. Strength here is uh, referring to, ironically it is referring to dissension or division. Uh, strength here is referring to misunderstandings or prejudice, you know, having a pre, uh, preconceptualized thought without knowing actually what is the fact, having make up your mind, you know, false opinion. So all these things can be won by what? By love. So the poet has uh, given a very important message here saying that love is that tool, a very powerful tool that can cut across all these differences and uh, it can cut across all our uh, battles with hardships that is to do with humanity. In every land is common life. It is the same thing in every land, whether it is in, uh, in England or whether it is in India, it is the same thing. Everyone can feel, recognize, understand, love. You know, if we think about it, if someone has shown you kindness, love and compassion, you would have understood, felt it. it. It is the same thing with a black person. It is the same thing with a white person or for that matter, a yellow person, you know. So see, that is why the poet is saying that love can cut across all kinds of differences. <laughs> Lines 13 to 20. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves. Let's take a look at this line here. Uh, a person who may be saying that or telling you to hate the neighbor or to hate the next country, your neighboring country, or to hate someone all because somebody is having a black skin color, all because somebody have, it seems to have uh, an eye that, or eyes that appears to be smaller than yours, you know, that kind of a thing that who, those people who create dissension or division, who tells you to go and hate your brothers, if you do that, it is us, that we hate ourselves. In other words, if you are hating someone, you are hating yourself. You are harming yourself. That we shall dispose us, betray, condemn. And in doing so, if by listening to that kind of, uh, uh, by listening to that kind of uh, advice, let's say, we would be betraying, we would be destroying, we would be victimizing nobody else but ourself. It is not about harming the, the other country. It is not about harming the neighbor. It is not about harming your enemy or opponent here. So the it is interesting that the pronoun there here is referring to it can be a, a person or a leader who is having an ignorant mind, who is not aware of all these common similarities, who is a prejudiced person. So that's what we have here. Remember, again, the poet re-emphasizes again, remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human earth that we defile. If we are fighting against each other, if we take up arms, or we, you battleship or fight against each other, it is the human race that we are harming. It is the, the earth that we are defiling, in other words, destroying. We, that is the very, the very home that we share, we are polluting. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence. In 
in, in times of war, what happened is that it is not just the, a person fighting with the enemy or a country fighting with the enemy who gets, into, who gets affected, but it is also the innocent people who are also harmed. They also get affected. So here is the alignment, that chain of events that connect everybody together. So even the innocent people are affected and they are angered by such kind of deeds or action of air that is everywhere our own. If we are polluting the environment, if we are fighting against, uh, by fighting against each other, if we are destroying the earth, we are destroying the very thing that we share, that is air, where, which is everywhere. And you cannot say that, uh, oh, you are breathing my air. You know, you cannot say that. Just because you travel to, let's say, Thailand, you cannot say that that is Thailand's air. You know, you cannot say that. It is common thing, we share it together. So the poet closed it with, again, the emphasis on, remember, no men are foreign and no country is strange. No one is different. No one is strange to us. Uh, no one, everyone is similar. And in that same way, no countries is, uh, no countries are strange, no countries are foreign to us. So that is written by James Kirkup. Now let's take a quick look at the context analysis. <clears throat> so if we take a look at the bigger picture of this poem here, uh, what is the motive? In, uh, in fact, I have uh, started off by mentioning that the word remember was being used. So the motive here is that the poet is trying to evoke the consciousness of the mind, all right? The consciousness of the mind from ignorance. So in what way did he do that? He again emphasize again and again using the words remember, let us remember, and so on. And uh, so what is the theme here? I'm sure you're able to figure it out for now. The theme is a universal theme that is about love for humanity or oneness of humankind. We can also say that it is about peace. It is also about war. It is also about ignorance. It is also about differences that we need to overcome. So that's what we have here. Now, if we think about it in this way, how can we develop love for humanity? You know, that is a, a big question in our mind. But the poet has given us a solution. And what is that solution? He said that love is the only thing that can cut across all these differences. Take the examples of cultures, differences in culture, differences in lifestyle, differences in race, color, differences in our, the, the language that we speak, or differences in ethnicity. All these things, whether you belong to a certain race, whether you have a, a certain color, skin color, or for that matter, different kinds of uh, uh, hair color, Everyone can understand love, recognize love. So that is a powerful tool to combat the evils of the world. In other words, the war that we are fighting. Now coming to the war here, we are not only talking about two countries fighting each other with big weapons, with bombs and so on, but we are talking about uh, fighting the evils that is also about, take the example of global warming. You know, everyone is being affected. We all share the same weather. The poet has also pointed it pointed it out in that way. We all share the same earth, we are all being nurtured by the same earth, and so if something is happening somewhere in the uh, world, it is also affecting us. So here we are talking about the alignment, how everyone, everyone and everything in this world is interconnected. So again, one of the theme here is interconnectedness. Everyone is interconnected. Whatever you do here, it affects, it ricochets in the other places. And the same thing goes with us. So that is why it is important. And that is why the poet is saying that if you are harming, if you are defiling the earth, you are harming yourself. So on that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.